Good morning, everybody. Morning, House Energy Policy Committee will come to order and uh, would ask the clerk to read a letter of appointments to this committee. Dear Mr. Clerk, I appoint the following <coughs> members of the 99th Legislature to the Standing Committee for Energy Policy. Representatives Glenn Hawk, Barrett Cole, Tedder, Bolino, Farrington, Griffin, Johnson, Lefebvre, Lauer, Riley, Lazinski, DeAnda, Kivula, Garrett, Camilleri, Elder, Green. Sincerely, Speaker of the House, Tom Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. If you would call the roll, please. Mr. Chair. Aye. Representatives Howell. Aye. Barrett. Here. Cole. Here. Tedder. Here. Bolino. Here. Farrington. Here. Griffin. Here. Johnson. Here. Lefebvre. Lauer, here. Riley, here. Wazinski, here. Yanda, here. Kula, here. Garrett, Camilleri, Elder, here. Green, here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The Standing Committee on Energy Policy will follow the Uniform Committee rules contained within House Standing Rules, which have already been adopted by the House. Um, also, want to ask for a motion uh, for uh, adopting the appointed day, time, and place of our meetings. Uh, Representative Cole motions that we meet on Tuesday at 9 a.m. of each week is my intention. Room 519 House Office Building. Motion has been made. All those in favor say aye. aye. We, have to, we have to take a roll call vote. Ah, roll call vote. If you would, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Chair? Aye. Senator Hall? Aye. <coughs> Barrett? Yes. Cole? Yes. Tedder? Yes. Bellino? Yes. Farrington? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Johnson? Aye. Fave, Lauer, yes. Riley, yes. Lazinski, yes. Deanda, yes. Kivla, yes. Garrett, Camilleri, Elder, yes. Green, yes. Mr. Chair, 16 yeas, zero nays, and zero pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Need a motion to excuse any absent members. Vice Chairman Lazinski moves that we excuse absent members. Hearing no objection, absent members are hereby excused. Uh, we are three minutes into the meeting, and I don't mean to belabor the point, but uh, I'm going to take a few minutes and give you some idea of what I intend for the next two years, and then I'm going to invite each of you so you can prepare your thoughts to introduce yourselves to the committee, uh, your fellow committee members, and to explain what your interest is, if you have any background uh, on the energy issue. Uh, <coughs> cert certainly, I hope you'll share that with us. I served as vice chairman of this committee my freshman year, uh, freshman uh, two years in the uh, House, and uh, it is, I believe, the most complex issue that the legislature faces, and I am committed to being extremely aggressive to help educate committee members, but beyond that, members of the House, because I do not think it's uh, in good conscience to have House members, including those who are not on the committee, casting votes on energy policy when they've had no opportunity to read legislation or uh, have no clue what the bills or policies are about. So I'm going to be extremely aggressive about that. And having just gone through the freshman experience of drinking from the fire hose, I think I have some ideas about how to, uh, to accelerate the process by which we can learn. I would call to the member's attention some handouts that you have in front of you, including a glossary. So that's a good starting point. I, I recall that it took me about two months just to have the terms down so that I would have an idea sitting in discussions uh, exactly what people were talking about. And one of the things that I'm going to do, and I had a, a brief conversation with uh, Vice Chair Lisinski about this, is I'm going to do my best as chair to insist that those who testify before the committee over the next two years do not speak in acronyms to avoid the industry jargon as much as possible and to help educate committee members, the public, and members of the legislature, other members of the legislature by speaking in simple terms as if we have no clue what you're talking about and you've got to instruct us. And in fact, 13 of the 19 members of this committee are first timers to the committee. Uh, and ex with the exception of Vice Chair Lisinski, who actually used to work for one of our uh, incumbent utilities, I don't know that anybody on the committee has any professional, of course you'll enlighten me if that's not the case, but uh, has any kind of professional background on the uh, energy issue. So we will certainly lean on Vice Chairman Lisinski's knowledge of the industry. We may not all agree on everything, but we're certainly going to defer to her experience and knowledge. Um, I think it is, I have found in the last several weeks that it is perhaps easiest to explain my intentions over the next two years by explaining what my attitude is not. 
So I can certainly say that it is not my attitude as chairman of this committee that we're going to say, well, okay, the legislature a month ago rewrote this legislation. We only do that once every decade. Therefore, this committee will spend the next two years twiddling its thumb and staring at the ceiling. That is not my attitude. Uh, I, I believe the last legislature had a duty, an obligation to render its best judgment on every issue regarding the energy uh, climate in this state. And I believe this new legislature and this new committee has an equal duty to render its best judgment on all the issues that came up. And I'd call the uh, committee members' attention to the fact that just on Friday, I think it was, we got news that the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission had rejected MISO's proposal for a three-year auction. And so if we didn't have justification before, I think we certainly have justification for going back and re-examining everything that was done, even as recently uh, as December. And I uh, look forward to working uh, together with Vice Chairman Halk and Vice Chairman Lisinski uh, to, uh, first of all, an aggressive education process, and then to get into the uh, work of considering legislation. Uh, I came to the legislature believing that everybody was telling me the truth until they gave me a reason to believe otherwise. And uh, I found that that wasn't always the case, so we're going to be very aggressive about uh, ensuring that statements before us are vetted. I'm going to do my best to make sure that weeks don't pass before we get information that contradicts what you might hear in this committee. I'm going to try to do that in real time uh, as statements are made. And just to give you an example, in, in the broadest sense, all of us who had any uh, part to play in the last two years and certainly the last couple of months on this uh, issue recall that as late as November, as recently as November and December, that there was even talk, somebody used the word potential blackouts. We started with $2 million worth of television ads in January of 2015 talking about brownouts and how the closure of all these coal plants was going to force us to have to uh, re-monopolize Michigan's entire energy market. All this talk, and as it got down toward the end when we were actually going to have to make a decision, and I think some parties were getting desperate, it moved to talking, somebody actually used the word blackout. And yet since January 1st, with that bill that was passed in December not going into effect until April, we've had statements, for example, from the Michigan Association of Energy that says we've got plenty of energy now such that we don't have to build any new plants. And the utilities uh, in their filings, excuse me, consumers in particular, were their filing to justify the closure of the Palisades nuclear plant and putting 600 people out of work in Representative Griffin's district. They said the reason they had the luxury of closing a op fully operational 1,000 megawatt plant is we had plenty of energy. So the, the tune has changed. Uh, so I, I uh, urge the members of the committee as they are studying and learning this issue to, be, uh, to use discretion, to be as aggressive as they can individually about seeking out all sides uh, of the issues and not to assume that just because there are $2 million worth of television ads that that's necessarily the full story. Uh, so we're going to be pretty aggressive about addressing all of those things. I believe Michigan is not competitive in terms of our ability to attract new business and industry. We have the highest electricity rates in the Midwest, 12th, 13th, 14th, uh, 14th highest in the nation. And uh, I know that the employers that I represent in the 98th district, this is their single biggest cost of doing business. Um, we have employees uh, who live in my district who work at the single biggest consumer of electricity in the state. The other thing I'm going to, uh, as chairman, do is try to arrange every opportunity for members of the committee on buses or otherwise to be able to go out and, and get a hands-on look at places like uh, Dow Chemical, Midland Cogeneration, Venture, uh, Hemlock Semiconductor, the single biggest consumer of electricity in the state, the MISO headquarters perhaps down in Indiana, the uh, uh, ITC headquarters, the transmission folks over in uh, Oakland County or Levo excuse me, Western Wayne County, give you as many opportunities to go see nuke plants, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to be very aggressive. Uh, in all honesty, I am not uh, exaggerating when I say we've got about 80 Tuesdays between now and the end of 2018. and. Uh, with what we have in mind uh, for this committee, I wonder if that's going to be enough. So we're going to be extremely aggressive about addressing uh, this issue and tr with the intent, the purpose being to try to make Michigan more competitive. We, ought, we shouldn't be satisfied until we're number one in the nation, the most attractive environment economically to attract industry and jobs that our people need. And one of the key elements of that 
is to have competitive energy rates, and we don't have that now. So if we are competitive, we've created some 450,000 new jobs since 2010. We're still about 400,000, maybe 350,000 short of what we started with uh, in 2000, since we were the number one uh, worst econo economy of the uh, first 10 years of this century, losing more jobs than any other state in the country. So we've got to continue to be aggressive about reversing that. Uh, I want to bring to the uh, committee's attention one bill in particular. It has bipartisan support. I've had as many Democrats as Republicans ask me to be co-sponsors. I'm going to hold it until we load it up with as many of you as want to co-sponsor as possible. It will be at my desk today. Uh, my intention would be to, uh, to drop it, say, on Thursday, and that would be, this is just one issue, uh, but it would be a bill that would allow each individual homeowner the right to decide for themselves on their property in their home whether they want advanced uh, uh, meter technology uh, put on their homes. Uh, there's, uh, I was at a Thomas Township meeting last night in Representative Kelly's district where the house was packed with people testifying saying simply for privacy concerns they didn't want to be forced to have these uh, smart meters put on their homes. And I understand the technological advantages and the savings advantages, but I do think private property rights and the right of the homeowner to make that decision uh, ultimately uh, rests with the homeowner. So I encourage members of the committee, those of you who are interested, to uh, come to my desk on the floor and co-sponsor that bill. It already has, I think, uh, three or four Democrats, three or four Republicans, and then we'll drop that and schedule a hearing on that uh, in short order. So the, the opening uh, salvo of uh, this committee will be to go through an education process as aggressively and quickly as we can. Also intend to use uh, the full oversight authority of this committee over the Public Service Commission and their proceedings over the closure of the Palisades nuclear plant. I want to make sure everybody's informed about what went on there. Uh, because I, th I feel like legislators, including the former chairman, the past uh, chairman of this committee, were blindsided with that announcement. Uh, Res Representative Nesbitt represented that district where some 600 people are now threatened with the loss of their jobs. So we're going to aggressively use the oversight authority of this committee. Uh, and I would like now to ask each member uh, to introduce themselves and make any uh, comments that you might have about your interest in serving. I just uh, want to make clear I welcome you. Uh, I'm excited about uh, what we can do with this issue, and uh, as I said in the letter to committee members, it was my experience in the first two years that this is not a partisan committee. On the issues that came before us last session, you had Republicans and Democrats on both sides of the issue. Uh, you, had a, you had one union on one side of the issue and another union on the other side of the issue. Uh, we found uh, in, in really a defining moment in uh, early on in the process in 2015 how dependent some of our public schools are on the ability to, to buy their electricity from someone other than DTE or consumers. Um, I think it, uh, the Detroit public school system is estimated if they were even able, and they're not under the current law, that they would save about $2 million a year. I believe it's the Kalamazoo system saves a million dollars a year. In my district, the Bay City Schools save $200,000 a year, and yet under the current law, all the other school districts in the district that I represent are prohibited by law from being able to access those same types of savings. And it was a defining moment when the business manager for the Clarkson Public Schools sat in front of us back in March of 2015, I believe it was, and advised the committee in very brief testimony that they save $350,000 a year because they're able to buy their electricity from somebody other than DTE, and that if we took away that choice, as some were proposing back in early 2015, that they would have to lay off five teachers. Uh, and I believe it is the case that in 100 of the 110 house districts, there's at least one school district that is buying its electricity from somebody other than consumers or DTE because they were smart enough, fast enough to get under that cap back in 2018. It simply defies reason, in my opinion, not just from an economic development standpoint, that some of our school districts are able to save hundreds of thousands, maybe even seven figures, in their electricity costs that they can then use to help educate our children, and the school district right next door is prohibited by law. I mean, that, that defies reason as far as I'm concerned, but that's just my opinion. We'll see how the committee feels about it. Uh, and if we would, uh, let's start with Vice Chairman Halk. If you would, introduce yourself and uh, give us some idea of your interest in this issue. 
Yeah, my name's uh, Roger Houck. I represent the 99th District, which is all of Isabella County and 10 townships in uh, Midland County. I chose energy because um, my uh, district uh, is a large manufacturing base, and energy is a big concern. Um, I don't know a lot about energy. I am going to kind of listen and learn. I pride myself on um, knowing there's two sides to every story. So I'm going to listen to both sides, and then I will make the best decision that I feel is uh, necessary for the people I represent in the 99th and the state of Michigan. And it's an honor to be the vice chair of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Tom Barrett. I'm in my second term from uh, Eaton County, the 71st House District. And I uh, just want to be on this committee because I want to eat whatever you're eating for breakfast. <laughs> so, <laughs> But uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve with you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations on your appointment as chair of the committee. And um, I know that you have a, uh, a vast background in, in knowledge that you've acquired over the last term. And I served on the committee with you last term as well and look forward to serving on it with you again this term. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's good to see everyone on the committee again. Uh, it's a second term uh, on the Energy Committee. Uh, Tristan Cole, the 105th district, which is five counties in northern Michigan. Uh, gas and oil is, uh, to kind of change the tune here a little bit, uh, gas and oil is very important to my district. It has uh, the controversial Line 5 that runs through uh, the uh, lengthwise through my district, and so that's very important for the economics. Uh, biomass, that's something that is very important to my district as well as there's a lot of forestry activity. There's a hydro facility as well. Uh, transmission is something that uh, we need to look at expanding. Uh, One Michigan is something I worked on the last term. Uh, looking forward to continuing to work on increasing the transmission capabilities of the state of Michigan. And that's very important as our e economy continues to recover. Uh, Really looking forward to the energy um, in this committee and uh, following the chair and looking forward to continuing to learn about uh, what is facing our state. The choice option in our schools is also important. In my entire five counties, I only have four schools that uh, are able to exercise that option for them. And I would like to see that expanded for more schools in the 105th district. So excited to be on this committee again and looking forward to what lays ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Jim Tedder, state representative, uh, serving in my second term from the 43rd district, which includes Clarkston, Independence Township, Lake Angeles, and Waterford Township. This is my first time on the Energy Committee, but, but certainly I don't think there were any of us that could have escaped this very important issue last term, and so I certainly took it upon myself to talk to the many stakeholders to educate myself on this uh, very important topic. And, uh, it, uh, as Chairman Glenn had uh, mentioned, you know, my home school district of Clarkson in, in many ways became the poster child or ground zero for the, the choice debate. And um, so that was when I first realized um, that I should probably uh, perhaps play a, a heavier role. And I'm fully committed to continuing to educate myself um, each and every day on this important topic. And I look forward to uh, working with this committee and uh, many of the stakeholders here in Lansing and across the state. Joe Bellino from the 17th District, Northeast Monroe County, and uh, three sections of Wayne County, Sumter, Flat Rock, and Rockwood. In my district, uh, we produce more power than any other district in the state. And then thank you, Chairman, for putting, putting me on this committee. And it's very important to remember that in my district, two Ford plants started because of the power they could generate from water flowing. And right next to my district are two more Ford plants started years and years ago. So energy and jobs are connected. We've got to keep working on it. Thank you. Uh, Diana Farrington from the 30th District. That's Macomb County. That's Utica, parts of Sterling Heights, and Shelby. Um, I do not know a lot about energy either. I've been doing a lot of reading. Um, so I am looking to be uh, really excited and hopefully make the right decision and be hope that our state is competitive. Thanks. Beth Griffin, 66th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to be on this committee. Looking forward to robust dialogue and um, learning a lot from all sides and with regards to the energy issue and also with regards to energy long-term reliability because, as we know, uh, um, 
Palisades is in my district and, and that weighs on me heavily, uh, would just implore um, the entire committee to, to do their due diligence here and to listen to all sides and um, would also ask that the chair give us a little bit of that learning time so that we can make um, strong decisions based on sound, sound decision making. Thank you. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Steve Johnson from the 72nd District. That's part of Allegan and part of Kent County. Uh, looking forward to serving on this committee. And uh, one of my priorities is to offer people more choices, more options uh, that will lower the price of electricity for my constituents. Thanks, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's an honor to be um, a representative from Dickinson, Delta, Menominee counties. Uh, all in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, it's an honor. This is my first committee. So looking forward to work on anything that is going to lower electricity prices for Upper Peninsula families and the Lower Peninsula if we can do that too. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jim Lauer from the 70th District, which is Montcom and Gratiot County. Uh, my primary interest in this committee is probably shared with everybody here. Everyone in my district pays an electric bill and has that uh, monthly bill. So I'm interested in that from that standpoint. But number two, there's a number of energy producers in the 70th, be it uh, a large windmill uh, farm in Gratiot County, and also there's oil and gas as well. So very interested in those issues and very honored to be on this committee. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time. Hello, uh, I'm John Riley from the 46th District, uh, Northern Oakland County. And uh, I really am uh, humbled to be on such an important committee that influences everybody's life in this state. Uh, I've always been uh, uh, amazed at the correlation between the cost of energy and the economy and, and the effect that that low price energy has on the economy. So I really look forward and, I'm, uh, and I really thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to be on this committee. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Pat Green. I'm from District 28, Western Warren, and all of Centerline. Within the district, we have six school districts, General Motors Tech Center, GM Transmission, Truck City for Dodge, uh, TACOM, and TARDEC. We have some very large manufacturing and consumers of energy uh, along with all of our residents. I went through Lame Duck and the debates that were had uh, during the last session when I started just after Thanksgiving last year. Um, I look forward to continuing it with Chair. Uh, I like the information he's put in front of us uh, thus far, and I look forward to serving with everyone. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, good morning, uh, colleagues. I'm uh, Brian Elder. I'm in my first term serving the 96th District, uh, which is the City of Bay City, City of Essexville, which is home to a 100-year-old uh, uh, energy plant owned by consumers, and the seven surrounding townships. My district uh, is, is home to energy producers, but uh, it also shares a border with the chair's district. And one of the largest employers of the residents of my district happens to be a corporation that's just a little bit outside of my uh, western border. Uh, so uh, energy needs from both the consumer perspective and the producer perspective are important to me. As a former chairman of the Bay County Board of Commissioners, I was involved in um, some of the uh, attempted uh, renovations at our local plant, and I found uh, the topic of energy to be fascinating. And I look forward to working very hard with all the members of this committee to come up to speed as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Lisinski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm honored to be selected as vice chair of this minority vice chair of this committee and I look forward to working with you and I'm glad that our early conversations have gotten off to such a good start. Um, energy in my mind is and from my experiences a very complex issue with many different layers and for me as we're looking forward to doing our work I have a set of adjectives that whatever solution we come up with that I would like to be able to apply to that solution. Um, my experience has been um, both working for DTE Energy um, approximately 20 years ago on the deregulation of the industry and then after that as a professional management consultant I'm across the country doing C-level consulting or um, you know, kind of at, at the top of company levels consulting um, throughout telecommunications and other industries, um, oil and gas, around deregulation and these critical issues. So when I think about um, the energy utility industry in particular and the adjectives I'd apply, ar apply around those, um, one is stable. Um, we have to 
ensure that our power is stable. Our manufacturers rely on stable, reliable um, power. We as um, citizens of our country rely now, uh, particularly um, as we've entered a new age, new age of advanced technology, on our power supply um, and our system being secure. So stable, secure, and reliable power. Those are three things that we must have. Um, we also need our power to be affordable, and not just affordable, but competitively priced. So when I think about the optimal solution that I'm hoping um, that we are consistently working towards and we're weighing information against is stable, secure, reliable, affordable, and competitively priced power. And so those would be the standards that I will hold um, the work that we do um, against as we consider um, testimony alternatives and uh, decision making. And so I look forward to serving. Um, I know that um, on, our, on our Democratic side that we have both experienced members and new members. But to all of us, to, to a member, um, we know that our employers, our families, and um, our constituency rely on us to make good decisions in this area. It's, it's something that when our power goes out, there's not a one of us here that isn't scrambling, that doesn't have that moment of, Oh dear, what do I do now? Um, it is so intricately worn into our, into our everyday life that um, any type of disruption or any type of major change um, causes disruption across both family manufacturers and our economy. So I look forward to working with you. I know the rest of my members do. And we will, we will do the studying, we will do the good work, and we will make good decisions together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Scott Dianda, represent the 110th district. I have six of the western counties, a part of Marquette County, so I have six and a quarter counties in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We have faced over the years the most highest prices in Michigan. I have so many different providers in my area. I'm very concerned about Michigan, the ratepayers. I think that'll be the major point that I want to make, Mr. Chairman. I'm very interested to see what we're going to do for making sure we always have the reliability, but I want to make sure wherever the cost is the cheapest, I would like to see us look at that. I am very interested to take a look on the federal level, too, to see what we can do as a partnership with the feds, to see what the new administration is going to be involved with. I also would like to see us take a look at PA 1939, the way they set up the service territories, I think we have the obligation to Michigan to provide the best power to get people back to work. And I'm very knowledgeable in that aspect. I was brought up around the power plants across the state of Michigan when I represented uh, one of the ASME bargaining units. We had seven power plants across the state, including the secondary complex and Western Michigan University, where they went from coal-fired to a natural gas plant. So I'm very familiar with those. We have generation that's being built in the UP. We have two new plants that are going to come up there. We're very glad about that. And I am not a fan of the Michigan one. I want to see wherever we're going to be able to get the most reliable and expensive power. And if it's coming from any other state, so be it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Dan. And this is a good opportunity for me to practice what I preached. Representative DeAnda, would you please, for the uh, sake of those who are new to the committee, tell them what Public Act 1939 is. Public Act 1939 is when they set up the whole service territory across the United States. That was the service territory map that electrified Michigan and all the other states. When we were bringing power into the farmlands, that's what created these service territories. And I think that we have an obligation now to see what is going to be the future with the new technologies that we can get involved with and see how we're going to service Michigan in a better way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm John Keevil. I serve the 109th uh, House District, uh, Central Upper Peninsula. I'm in my third term, second term on energy. Um, you know, I asked for this committee last term because this is the most pressing issue that we face in the Upper Peninsula. And I actually was working on energy uh, issues back when I was the mayor in the city of Marquette because we identified uh, reliable and affordable energy as our key obstacle for, um, you know, future growth. And <clears throat> You know, Rep. Diane and I um, kind of see the same issue. We kind of have different ideas on how to attack it. But I will tell you that right now in Michigan, we have uh, two 
major service areas. In northern Michigan, it's kind of an island by itself, particularly the Upper Peninsula. We're dependent on Wisconsin. That has not served us very well. Uh, I do, like uh, the governor's office and like mem many members, believe that we need a Michigan solution going forward. Um, you know, my city manager uh, coined the phrase years ago, if we relied on St. Ignace and Mackinac City to build a bridge, we'd still be taking ferries across. Um, but we're to that point where in order to benefit uh, Representative Cole's district, my district, Rep. Dianda's district, we need to have one Michigan and, and one connection. So, you know, that continues to be my goal. Uh, it's no secret in the Upper Peninsula we have, uh, you know, timber, which is a big business, but we also have mining, which is very, uh, it's a very very big user of, of energy. You know, up to 25% of the nation's iron comes from my district. They are a huge draw. If we can't secure reliable, affordable energy, it really cripples the state. So that'll continue to be my passion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Darren Camilleri. I represent House District 23, which is uh, just north of Representative Bellino in uh, Brownstown, Woodhaven, Trenton, Gibraltar, Grozeal, and Huron Township, Southern Wayne County. Uh, one of the top priorities that I will be focused on during my term is thinking about ways that we can uh, make up for the decommissioning of the DTE power plant that is, going, that is in Trenton. So one of the, the plants is in my district. I'm already talking to local leaders about ways that we can make up for some of the lost tax revenue for the city of Trenton, as well as we can redevelop that land. But it is definitely an issue that will be uh, hitting home for folks in my district. I do think that the responsibility of this committee is to ensure that we do have responsible and reasonable energy policy for folks in Michigan that includes making sure that we have lower costs for Michiganders. But I also believe that we should be focusing on something that I haven't heard so far, uh, renewable energy and thinking about the future and effects of climate change so that we can make sure that we are taking care of the state of Michigan and our environment as well so that not only are we addressing short-term uh, problems but looking at the long-term solutions that we will be realizing in the coming future for the next generations as well. So it's something that I'll be focusing on heavily in my work because we do have a responsibility to the environment as well. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. And uh, Representative Camilleri, uh, that also uh, provides a good opportunity to make this point. You may or may not be able to persuade some of the Republican members of the committee uh, as to the environmental motivations, but what we found in the last two years was that the uh, interests of those who are motivated by concern for the environment and the interests of those of us who would simply like to see a more open market and competition instead of having all our eggs in two baskets, that they intersect. Or as uh, one of the alternative newspapers here in Lansing had a, had a uh, headline to the something to the effect of the Green Tea Party Coalition. So I found, for example, last year I was a co-sponsor with Representative Irwin from Ann Arbor on several pieces of legislation. And Representative Irwin has agreed to come back and explain uh, the uh, justification behind some of the legislation that, because of his concern for the environment, was uh, expanding the option of, for example, all the churches in a given county, or all the farm bureaus, all the farms, all the civic clubs, the ability, to, for example, to buy a solar array and invest in it and then profit from the savings. Not only save electricity, but make any overage uh, available to the public and profit from that. And that's not allowed under current law. So we did fa find an intersection uh, where we ended up at the same spot for perhaps different reasons. So as long as you're willing to have us, uh, those of us on this side of the uh, committee, support things you're proposing for a different reason than you might be, I think we're going to find a lot of common ground that we're going to be able to pursue. Uh, I note that we have, with the exception of Speaker Pro Tem Chatfield, every legislator who represents the Upper Peninsula is on this committee. I don't think that's by an accident. Uh, and so that is also an issue that we intend to be as aggressive as we can about trying to find a solution. And I'm going to be looking uh, to the expertise and, and leadership of Representative Cole and Lefebvre and DeAnda and Kivala, uh, help us guide, uh, guide us down that path. And then something we didn't address at all in the last term, uh, and especially timely, I think, in today's world environment, uh, I'm told that uh, we have a former uh, director of the Central Intelligence Agency who is willing to come testify before us about grid security. And so we're going to focus on that. And I know there's some uh, enthusiasm in the Speaker's office for addressing that. Uh, what can we do at the state level to secure uh, our energy supply 
And uh, I think just as a matter of principle that if you want to have a reliable and affordable energy supply, it should be diverse and competitive, not put all your eggs in two baskets. Um, have as many people available to invest in the development and, and uh, generation provision of energy as possible, uh, and then encourage everybody to go out and compete and uh, be aggressive about it. I think that's where we end up under those uh, pretty commonly understood principles we observe in every other area of our life, competition and consumer choice, I think provides us the uh, best product at the best price. With that said, and I hope, uh, I hope I've made clear that I expect to meet every Tuesday, I expect to be very aggressive about the oversight authority of this committee. I encourage committee members. I joked at some point in 2015 that I haven't studied this hard since college, and then I realized I didn't study this hard in college. Uh, so I encourage you to spend the hours it's going to take just to get up to speed on the terminology. I remember being in a meeting sometime in March and was kind of giddy at the notion that I actually understood what was being discussed around the table one day at lunch. So I encourage you to invest the time. Um, it is a privilege to be on any committee. A legislator does not have to be on committees. So it's a privilege to be on this committee, and this is an important one. Uh, in terms of our economic development and job creation. I, I certainly intend to take it seriously. I encourage members of the committee to do so. We're going to be a model, it's my intention, of bipartisanship, of nonpartisanship. This issue has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. So we are going to be a model of, of uh, nonpartisan cooperation on this issue. And I've worked enough with the re returning members of the, of the Democratic representation on this committee. They know I, and I mean that. And I'm going to be looking uh, to uh, uh, Vice Chair Lisinski uh, in general and her experience, and also uh, Representatives DeAnda and Kivala certainly defer to their expertise and interest and passion for finding a solution to the Upper Peninsula. That's about all I've got to say today. Does any other member of the committee have something that they need to bring before the committee between now and next Tuesday when we get to work? Yes, uh, Representative DeAnda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would really appreciate if we could get a handout just for the basics of physics to get a lot of folks up to speed on neutrons. I think that would be very helpful before we even start any discussion if we just had a little sheet because <laughs> I think that that was a discussion that sometimes was in a failure last time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You bet, Representative Vienna. Uh, someone in the audience will be happy, I'm sure, to step up and offer us that opportunity. In testimony and staff, you were so instructed to educate us all on neutrons and electrons. I believe they're involved as well. Uh, anybody else for the good of the committee? If not, Representative Halk makes a motion that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. We stand adjourned. <laughs>